There is a blessing from God that is also ahead of you. And you may have to cross that river. You may have to go up that hill. You may have to go over that mountain. You may have to go through that valley to get to that blessing that you again have to move towards to take possession of. Do you see what I'm saying to you today? Will you have the courage? Every time we get to the month of August, I think about the dog days of summer, and I think about how the children are going back to school and how many of us were just trying to push it and push it as we continue to go through this year. But again, I tell you, as I say at the beginning of most years as well, is that it takes faith. It takes faith for us to continue forward on this journey. But stepping out in faith, again, it's not easy for a lot of us. And the reason why it's not easy for a lot of us, because personally speaking, many of us, we fear the unknown. You see, with the unknown, there comes uncertainty and we struggle a great deal with uncertainty in life. You see, we prefer guarantees, don't we? We would like to know what is ahead rather than being uncertain about what is ahead. So with uncertainties, there come again anxiety. With the unknown, there comes a great amount of fear that I believe all of us at some point in time while we are on this journey, I believe that all of us, we go through. So that can make it very hard for us when it comes to stepping out in faith in the Lord while we are moving forward on this journey. There are only a few certainties in life with God and his blessings being the main certainty. You see, God and his blessings, we know that they are always there for us while we are on this journey through life. With that in mind, I want to focus on taking possession, moving forward to take possession of the blessings that God has for us on this journey. And the fact that it takes courage for us to step out in faith, to move towards the blessing that God has for us. Now, when it comes to taking possession of what God has for us, we should understand that courage is required for us to step out in faith. See, I say that because the truth of the matter is that we face challenges in many forms in life. We face challenges physically. We face challenges mentally. We face challenges emotionally. We face challenges spiritually as well. And all of the challenges that we face in life, they present themselves to us for one main reason that reason being to thwart us on this journey, especially when we are trying to move towards the blessing that we know that God has for us. It seems that the closer and closer that we get to the blessing that God has for us, the more and more challenges that present themselves to us. It seems like the closer and closer that we get to a blessing, it seems like life gets harder and harder for us to deal with. I know that because, again, on my journey to receiving my new kidney, all kinds of things began to happen. The dialysis machine started to act funny. My blood pressure started to go through the roof. When in five years, everything was working perfectly. And I knew when those things was beginning to happen that the devil must have been trying to keep me from my blessing. I knew that something must have been in the works for me because all of these challenges, they began to present themselves to me. I don't know if that has ever happened to you before. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. So I would tell you today that when you are moving towards your blessing, when the tough is getting tougher, 
it's time for you to step out in faith and to do so with courage. Do not be afraid to step out in faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Faith, as you have heard me say before, it does not sit still. It's not enough for you to say that you believe. Faith, it should not be, in other words, paralyzed. You should not be paralyzed when your faith in the Lord. At the same time, I would say to you today that faith, it should be stubborn. Now, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by faith should be stubborn? Well, your faith, it should not be easily moved. You see, your faith, it should keep moving forward. No matter how difficult the challenges may be in life for you, no matter how tough things may be getting for you, your faith in the Lord, it should keep on plowing forward through all of the challenges that present themselves to you while you are on your journey. We must go through all of the obstacles that are before us. And to get to that point, we must again have the courage to take the first step in overcoming all of our challenges. We must have the courage to take the first step in overcoming all of our obstacles. And so I ask all of you today, do you have that courage? Do you have the courage to make the first step in stepping out in faith when the going gets tough for you? Or will you be paralyzed in fear today? Will you be afraid to take on the challenges that present themselves to you in your life? Now, I don't know what you may be going through today, but I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to take that first step. I want to encourage you today to step out in faith in the Lord. So here in my key verse for today, we will see where the Lord, he said to Joshua, he said to him, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Have I not commanded you, the Lord says there, to not be dismayed? You see, this I believe in sincere faith. This is what I believe the Lord says to all of us on our journey. I believe that when the going gets tough for us, I believe that God, he comes to you and he says, Betty, have I not said to you, be strong and of good courage? He says to us, he says to you, Andrew, when the going gets tough, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Now, we will notice here in this passage of scripture that God, he told Joshua to be strong and of good courage. We'll see that he told him there. He told him that, or to be very courageous there in the sixth, the seventh, and in the ninth verse. The Lord, he told Joshua to be strong and of good courage or to be very courageous. He told him that three times. So why? Why was God so adamant to Joshua about Joshua being strong and of good courage here in this passage of scripture? Well, we have to consider what Joshua was going through, what he was facing at that moment in time, at that moment in time, Moses had just passed away. And we are told there in the first and in the second verse that the Lord, he called on Joshua to now take up the position that Moses was in, in leading the children of Israel across the Jordan and into the promised land. So in other words, we will say that Joshua he was now stepping into some big shoes to fill. Joshua was now leading the children into the promised land, the land that was promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and to the children of Israel. We would say that Joshua was now in a very challenging position in his life where he once was the assistant for Moses, he was now the leader. You see, that new position, 
It wasn't the same as being someone's assistant. He was now leading a people into a land that was, yes, promised to the children of Israel, but it was a land that was foreign to them. They had never been in this land. Abraham was in that land at one point in time, but not these children of Israel. This land, it will be a strange land to them. And when the spies went over into the land, they saw the challenges that the land presented to them. Yes, it was a land flowing with milk and honey. But the spies, when they went over into that land, that land, they said it was filled with giants. That land, it was filled with fortified cities. So there were challenges that would be in the way for the children of Israel taking possession of their blessing, which was the promised land. It would not be easy. Now, I would say to you all today that many of us, we share many similarities with Joshua in the position that he was now in. No, we aren't leading a people into a, a promised land like Joshua was. But again, we are believers, aren't we? And we have been commissioned by the Lord. We have been commissioned to baptize all people in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. So in a manner of speaking, we are guides in a way to a land of promise that land of promise being the heavenly kingdom. Not only this, but all of us, I tell you to you today, we are again, we are on our journey. We are all on a journey where we are always journeying into the unknown. We don't know what is ahead of us. Again, when we talk about certainties in life, one of the certainties in life is that life is always changing. We may see what is off in the distance for us, but we don't know exactly what is awaiting us in the distance. In the distance, you and I, we may see some hills. In the distance, we may see some mountains. In the distance, we may see a river. In the distance, we may see a valley. But again, we don't know what awaits us in those hills, do we? We don't know what awaits us in those mountains. We don't know the might of the mighty river that may be ahead of us. And we don't know how treacherous that valley might be that is before us. We are always journeying into the unknown. What is ahead of us is uncertain. And as has been said before, tomorrow is not promised. And so again, we share many similarities with Joshua that can strike up some fear within us that can strike up some anxiety within us as well. How do you deal with what is ahead of you? Are you paralyzed by what is ahead of you? When I say to you today that for a certainty, there is a blessing from God that is also ahead of you. And you may have to cross that river. You may have to go up that hill. You may have to go over that mountain. You may have to go through that valley to get to that blessing mm -hmm. that you again have to move towards to take possession of. Do you see what I'm saying to you today? Amen. Will you have the courage to cross the mighty river that's before you to take possession of the blessing that God has for you? Will you have the courage to go up that hill to take possession of the blessing that God has for you? Will you go up that mountain and over that mountain to take possession of the blessing that God has for you? Will you go through that valley? Do you have the courage to go through that valley to take possession of the blessing that God has for you? Or will you sit down? Will you be paralyzed? What good would come from that 
if you sit down instead of move to take possession of the blessing that God has for you. Again, I say today that if you desire the blessing that God has for you, it takes courage for you to step out in faith. Do you have that courage today? Through every challenge, we should know that God, he is constantly encouraging us. You should understand that the Lord is constantly encouraging you to be strong and to be of good courage, to step out in faith in him. He did this with Joshua, as we will see here today. We'll see that in the third verse. We'll see God's encouragement that at first it came through his, his assurance. You should understand today that when the Lord encourages you, it first comes through his assurance. God, he said to Joshua there in the third verse, he said, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. God, he assured Joshua of the same blessing that was assured to Moses that was again also assured to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as well. That assurance that was given to Joshua was about the blessing of the promised land. I want you to understand that what the Lord was saying to Joshua was that the promised land, it is yours. In other words, what God was saying to Joshua was that the blessing, it is yours. All that Joshua and the children of Israel had to do was move to take possession of the blessing. All they had to do was the same thing that we have to do today. Because I say to you today that God says the same thing to all of us. He says, Deanna, I have a blessing for you. It's already there for you. All you have to do is go and take possession of the blessing. And I tell you today that God, he has made this same assurance, not just to Deanna. He has made the same assurance to all of you, to all of us as well. Our blessing is there for us. All you have to do is have the courage to step out in faith and take possession of that blessing. Now, if you don't believe me, we should understand, we should know, and we should remember that Jesus, he said that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, that what we ask of him, what we desire, it will be given to us. The blessing, it is already there for you. All you have to do is go and take possession of God's blessings for you. In order for us to receive our blessings again, all you have to do is go and take possession of that blessing. So again, I ask you today, do you have the courage to go and take possession of the blessing that God has for you? Many of us will say, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, yeah, I'll go and I have the courage to go and do it. But guess what? Many of us, we aren't stepping out in faith today. Many of us, we are sitting down. We watch others as they blow by us to, to go and take possession of their blessing. And then when they grab it, we look at them and then we go, oh, they got their blessing. Man, I wish I could have something like that. We watch others as they sprint past us full of faith to take possession of what God has for them. And then we go, God, where am I in that? And then the Lord says to us, well, it's there. All you have to do is have courage, be strong, and go take possession of it. Why are you sitting down? Are you looking for a handout? See, that's what happens. Many of us, we're looking for a handout from the Lord today. Instead of moving in faith, instead of having the courage to step forward. Now, let us notice that after God assured Joshua of the blessing being theirs to possess he said to Joshua there in the fifth verse, he said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. 
It said again, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Do you understand that God says the same thing to you today? Again, he said there, he said, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So why was the Lord saying this to Joshua? You see, God, I believe he, he knew what it was that could hinder Joshua and the children of Israel from moving to take possession of their blessing. And to explain my thought on that, I, I want to take a brief look at Moses in the third chapter of Exodus where you see the Lord, he had some previous experience, if you will, with calling on someone to move and to take possession of what he had promised. You see, when God called Moses to lead the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, there was much trepidation coming from Moses. When the Lord called on Moses to go into Egypt, Moses, he didn't move right away. Moses, he wasn't so happy to accept his calling. Moses, he expressed some great fears that he had about, again, doing what the Lord had called on him to do. So what was it that, that Moses feared? Well, there in the third chapter of Exodus and in the 11th verse, we will see that Moses, he said to God, he said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? You see, Moses doubted that, that he was the man for the job. Moses doubted that, that he was the man to go and to stand before Pharaoh. You see, Moses he first doubted himself. He then feared Pharaoh. He feared going to stand before Pharaoh. And all of this, I want you to understand today that Moses, he was doubting the Lord. There was no courage there. Now to calm these fears, we'll see there in the 12th verse that the Lord said to Moses, I will certainly be with you. God says to us today, when, 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 when there's a blessing that is there for us and we're fearful to go to that blessing, the Lord says, what are you afraid of? I am here with you. I'm not going to leave you. When we're afraid of those that are before us, when we're afraid of the obstacles that are before us, that may be blocking our path to the blessing. God says again to us, what are you afraid of? I am with you. When the Lord tells us that he is with us, he expects us to step out in courage and to move forward. He doesn't expect you to sit still. He wants you to get up and go. So why are we sitting still today? Now, Moses, his fears, they were yet to become. As we will see that he then expressed how he was afraid to then go to the children of Israel there in the 13th and in the 14th verse. Moses, he asked God, he said, what if they question who sent me? And to calm that fear, we'll see that the Lord said to Moses, tell the people I am. Tell the people that I am has sent me to you. But again, Moses, his fears, his trepidation, they didn't go away. As we'll see in the fourth chapter of the book of Exodus there in the first through the fifth verse, we'll see that Moses had to be given proof of the Lord. And the Lord, he had him take a staff and he told him to take it with him after showing the power that he could do through that staff. He told Moses to take it with him, to show it to the people, 
show the power of God to prove that I am with you and that I sent you. So when God assured Joshua that he would always be with him, Joshua, he could rest assured in all that Moses had overcome while they were on their journey to the promised land. Consider that, that with God being by his side, Moses and the children of Israel, they overcame Pharaoh and his army. They overcame the Red Sea by crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. They, again, they overcame several adversaries that they faced on their journey to the promised land. They even overcame their sins as well. Again, feel like that's something that all of us need to hear today. Because again, I say to you today that many of us, we have fears of the, un the unknown. We have fears of what is uncertain in our life. But again, I say to you today that you should remember the Lord. Remember all that God has brought you through so far on your journey. You have faced your pharaohs and your armies that you have overcome. You have crossed red seas on your journey. Again, I say to you today that you have faced off against many adversaries on your journey and you have overcame them as well. So why are you afraid today of whatever it is that you may be going through? Because I say to you today, whatever it is that you may be going through today, you are going to overcome. One way or the other, God is going to give you the victory. You are going to overcome. Mm -hmm. And you are going to get to that blessing to be able to take possession of that blessing that God has for you. Keep moving forward. Don't sit still. It takes courage. You see, Joshua, he was to move forward in the courage of God being with him. And I tell you that Joshua, he did just that. Because he had the courage to move in faith, Joshua and the children of Israel, they crossed the Jordan. Because Joshua had the courage to move forward and to step out in faith, again, he and the children of Israel, they began to take possession of the blessing which began by them circling around Jericho and then seeing Jericho and his walls fall before them. You see, I'd say to you that there was no kingdom that was able to stand against Joshua and the children of Israel as they were working to take possession of their blessing. As again, God was delivering enemy after enemy. God was delivering obstacle after obstacle. God was delivering challenge after challenge into their hands to where they had the victory over all that they faced all because they had the courage to step out in faith in the Lord. I, again, I say to you today that when you have the courage to step out in faith in the Lord, he will deliver victory into your hand. Enemy after enemy, obstacle after obstacle, challenge after challenge, you will have the victory over if you simply have courage to step out in faith in the Lord. I want you to understand today that because God is always with you, you can move with the same power that Joshua and the children of Israel move with today. I tell you that there will be nobody that can hinder you. There will be nobody that can stop you from taking possession of what God has for you. So I say to you again today, don't fear. Don't fear that you are incapable. Don't fear that you are incapable of possessing what God has for you. Don't fear the unknown. Don't fear what is uncertain. I tell you to again today, that what is certain that is that if you step out in faith, you will be delivered to your blessing and you will be able to take possession of your blessing. Mm -hmm. We as sincere believers, we must have the courage to step out in faith. When we do that, we should know that God is going to take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. 
when you have the courage to take the first step in faith, understand again today that the Lord will take care of the rest. Do you have that courage today? After those words of encouragement, the Lord, he said to Joshua there in the seventh verse, he said, be strong. He said to Joshua, be very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now, within this word of encouragement from God, there is an even greater similarity that we find between ourselves and Joshua here. Now, some of us, we may be wondering, well, what is this similarity? Well, Moses, he was able to stand face to face with God on several occasions where the Lord visited him. It first began with the burning bush that was not consumed by a flame. It then continued on when Moses was able to go up into Mount Sinai and be with the Lord. It continued on on several other occasions where the Lord visited and spoke with Moses, quote unquote, face to face. But Joshua, on the other hand, he did not have that face to face meetings that, that Moses was able to enjoy with the Lord. However, Joshua, as we see here in our scripture today, he was able to hear from God. And this is a similarity that we share with Joshua in that through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are able to hear the voice of God. We are able to discern the voice of God. And again, the voice of God, it will guide us while we are on this journey. It will guide us to the blessing that he has for us. Are you listening to the Lord today? As I mentioned a few minutes ago, Moses, he was armed by God with the staff to prove that he was sent by the Lord. Joshua didn't have a staff. However, as we will see here, Joshua, he was armed with the book of the law, which was actually recorded by Moses. Now, with the book of the law, God, he told Joshua to meditate in it. We're told there in the eighth verse. He was told to meditate in it day and night in order to observe all that was written in it so that it not depart from him. As believers, we are also armed today. We are armed with the word of God. And we're told that we should be diligent in the word. We should be diligent in our studies so that we can be ready in season and out of season. We are told to be diligent in the word of God so that the word of God not depart from us. Now, should Joshua have meditated in and lived by the book of the law? We'll see that God said to him there in that a verse that he would make his way prosperous. If Joshua meditated and if he lived by the book of the law, he would have made his way prosperous. And then he would have also had good success. Guess what that means for all of us today if we meditate in the word of God, if you and I, we meditate in the word of God today, we will be prosperous. If we meditate in the word of God today, again, we will have good success. We again will be able to take possession of the blessing that God has for us. By stepping out in faith, Joshua, he enjoyed great success. By having the courage to step out in faith, Joshua was able to boast that he and his house would serve the Lord because God was good to him. Guess what? If you step out in faith today, then you will be able to boast the same because you will see that God is a good God, that God is good to you. He will deliver to you blessing after blessing for you to take possession of. 
So again, I ask you today, are you stepping out in courage to take possession of your blessing? What about you and your house? Do you and your house, do you serve the Lord today? Are all of you stepping out in faith today? Now, I truly understand that it can be difficult for, for us to step out in faith today. Yes, some of us, we worry about the uncertainties of life. We worry about what is ahead of us. And others, they let people block them from their blessing. They let the laughter of others, they let the mocking that comes from others about their faith in the Lord, they let it get to them and they let it stop them from being able to take possession of what God has for them. However, I want you to understand again today that your blessing is there and that you should not let the mockery of others. You should not let the jokes and the laughers of others. You shouldn't let it hinder you. You shouldn't let it stop you from going to take possession of what God has for you. As Paul said in his letter to the Ephesians, God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly in Christ. All we have to do is have the courage to step out in faith towards taking our blessing. Sadly, as shown through the children of Israel, so many of us, we aren't truly possessing all of the blessings that God has for us. You see, the children of Israel, they only possessed a fraction of the land, the blessing that was promised to them. You see, you may be wondering why that was the case. Why did they only possess just a fraction of, again, what was promised to them? Why did they only possess just a fraction of the blessings? Well, the truth is that the courage to move in faith, that it, it began to dwindle within the children of Israel. It began to dwindle when Joshua passed away. It began to dwindle when the elders, when they passed away. It began to dwindle when Eleazar, the high priest who was the son of Aaron, it began to dwindle when he passed away. Sadly, this is a similarity that the church shares today. When I say that, I say that because many of those who raised us, those who are the elders of the church today, many of them are starting to leave us. And we are being left with a generation that is starting to move with absolutely no courage at all in the Lord. They aren't stepping out. We aren't stepping out in faith in God. And because we aren't moving with courage, because we aren't stepping out in faith in the Lord, we aren't taking possession of all that God has for us. We aren't getting all of our blessings from the Lord today. As I said last month, the fire of the church, it is starting to go dim. And that flame, it needs to be reignited. It needs to be reignited today because that flame, it is starting to dim at a very quick rate. Again, I tell you today that the children of Israel, they were left behind to not being able to take all of their blessing, all because they didn't move with courage. And because they didn't move with courage, many of them, they began to fall into worshiping idols. They began to depart from the law. They began to depart from the Lord and in departing from the law and in departing from the Lord and his word, they began to depart from the blessing that he had for them. We must not depart from the word of God today. It is time for us as a church to just start to stop departing from the word of God. Because when we depart from the word of God, we begin to become complacent in our hearts. And our complacency, it carries us away from the blessings. We begin to settle for less rather than strive for greater, rather than strive for the blessings. God does not want you to settle for less. The Lord, he wants you to receive every blessing that he has for you. So again, I say to you today, stop departing from the word of God. Have courage today. Regardless of what anybody says about you and your faith, 
regardless of the challenges that you may be facing right now, have courage. Have courage to step out in faith in the Lord. And again, I say that when you have courage to step out in faith in the Lord, again, you're going to overcome all those challenges. Again, you're going to overcome all those obstacles. You're going to overcome all those that laugh at you. You're going to overcome all of those that mock you. And you are going to take possession of your blessing. And when you take possession of that blessing, you are going to have great joy. It will be you that turns around and look at all that you overcame and you will do it with a smile on your face today. So again, I encourage you today, have courage, no matter what it is that you're going through, have courage to take that first step and step out in faith. Amen. 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 Amen.